Ideally, the end of a game gives you a satisfying last bout of gameplay and wraps up the story. Ideally. On occasion, though, a finale is so left field they could be having Coachella in the right field and you wouldn't notice. These were the game endings that made us go, wait, what? Also, beware spoilers for these following games. I know what you're thinking. The original Doom had a story? A story that had an ending? I thought it was just about a jacked space marine shooting demons in hell. That's where you're wrong, my friend. It was actually a complex and emotionally resonant tale about Samuel Doomguy, a young man from a wealthy family whose artistic ambitions are crushed by his overbearing father's desire for him to follow his footsteps into the upper echelons of the business world. Oh, all right, it was just about a jacked space marine shooting demons in hell. <laughs> Still had an ending though. Defeat the game's final boss, a giant robot spider brain thing, and hell opens a secret door that lets you return to Earth. Good thing no Hellspawn could have also come through that door, thinks Doomguy, in an incredibly subtle bit of foreshadowing. That's when we see Earth, represented by a field and a rabbit. What could be more earthy than that? But this is Doom, so it's four seconds before the rabbit has its head ripped off and impaled on a spike by the Hellspawn, who totally did come through that door. <laughs> Psych! They've also built a big hell castle. Why and how have they done that? And why kill the rabbit? Is its head on a spike as a warning to other rabbits? Did they think Doom Guy was a rabbit under that armor? So many questions. As the title suggests, The Matrix Path of Neo follows the path of Neo from the Matrix movie trilogy, hiking through major events from the three films, more or less retreading the footsteps of Keanu Reeves' messianic trench coat wearer. Trinity! Help! At the end, however, the game doesn't so much take a detour as swerve off the road, set fire to the map, and hit the gas in a random direction. This is my world, Mr. Anderson, my world! Just as you're about to canonically triumph and sacrifice yourself, the Wachowskis turn up unannounced in the shape of two Atari sprites and explain, well, you tell me what they explain. Ready to resolve the paradox of choice and choicelessness, of free will versus fate, but that can only be achieved through an act of surrender, which he occurs after he has abandoned the perspectival nature of truth, accepting the totality of present consciousness, which ultimately allows an evolutionary transition. The gist of it, I think, is that the game can't end the same way as the movie and still be satisfying, which is up for debate. However, in their words... Now, maybe that works in a movie, but in a video game, the Jesus thing is, well, lame. Really lame. If you're like us, then right now you're ready for 15 minutes of sweaty, palmed, button-pushing action to kick the crap out of some big badass boss. And that badass boss turns out to be a giant mecha version of Agent Smith, made up of smashed up buildings and all the other little Smiths, and a pair of oversized sunglasses nicked off a billboard. Never mind following through on the philosophical themes and religious allegory of the Matrix, hey, this way Neo gets to punch a hole through a Godzilla-sized Agent Smith. Indigo Prophecy, or Fahrenheit as I knew it back in British 2005, had plot strands that included an immortal Mayan priest who kills people, a clan of sentient AIs, a clan of Illuminati, and a prophesied child who knows the meaning of life but can't talk. With this much going on, and so much of it so weird, it's no wonder the game finished with more loose threads than an explosion in a tapestry factory. There are various endings, each bewildering in their own way, but the bad ending takes the prize for being the most effective at making us go, wait, what? In this ending, the clan of glowing yellow internet people come out on top, like so. You are even more obstinate than we had thought, human. But the game is over. You and your race have lost. Your inferior species will disappear like the dinosaurs before you. 
We, the artificial intelligences, will be the new dominant race on this planet. Thanks to the secret of the child, we will know all. We will be more powerful than gods. Yeah, exactly, Internet Man, exactly. And to say the ending threw us for a bit of a loop is like saying the ocean is a bit on the damp side. The clan of sentient artificial intelligences get the kid, and now that she finally decides to speak up, it's to tell the evil computer man the secret of life. Which we never find out, by the way. It's like that bit at the end of Lost in Translation, if Bill Murray were a being made of sentient machine code. Also, most of humanity dies. How could I forget? Three quarters of humanity have already perished. The rest are chased night and day by the machines. We're forced to live underground like rats. But at least the protagonist got his love interest pregnant before the end of the world. That means our child was radiated by the chrome at Wishita, just like I was in my mother's womb. Yay! <laughs> Classic point-and-click adventure Monkey Island 2 has hero Guybrush Threepwood scouring the Caribbean for the fabled treasure of Big Whoop. Guybrush is also being pursued by the zombie pirate LeChuck, the reanimated corpse of his rival from the first game who wants to kill him and marry his girlfriend in any order. Towards the end of the game, Guybrush and LeChuck converge on the titular Monkey Island for what should be an epic showdown as Guybrush excavates the treasure of Big Whoop with some convenient dynamite. Except, that's when it gets weird. Falling through the hole you've made, you find yourself in some modern looking tunnels, and the treasure of Big Whoop turns out to be a ticket with the letter E printed on it. After a bit of voodoo, it turns out LeChuck is Guybrush's brother, and that they're both actually kids, and that they're at the Big Whoop amusement park with their parents. Or are they? Maybe it's a spell or something, I don't know. Bold choice there to make your swashbuckling pirate adventure finish with a WTF rug pull ending similar to It Was All A Dream. Which is why the sequel, Curse of Monkey Island, did the sensible thing and basically ignored it. Captain's Log, Guybrush Threepwood. Lost at sea for days now. I have no crew or navigational instruments. <laughs> Let's say you were playing through all of the characters in Dead or Alive 4 story mode. As you worked through the whole roster, you would detect a trend for reasonably offbeat endings, like the one where Kasumi dreams she's a mermaid. You do you, Dead or Alive. But because you're doing the fighters in alphabetical order, you finally get to Zack, who's an American DJ and practitioner of Muay Thai. Here's where DOA4 kicks it up a notch. So we find Zack and Nikki tomb raiding an ancient Egyptian pyramid, sure. Shunning even Dead or Alive's own internal logic, which is kooky at the best of times, here they find an actual skeleton king reanimated by ancient Egyptian magic, you assume, who tries to kill them, but then Zack summons a silver Zentai, and Nikki takes off her top because Dead or Alive, and they kill the king and steal his gold. <laughs> Which, of course, raises only one important question. Why is the ancient Egyptian king a skeleton and not a mummy? Think it through, dead or alive. God! You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Most of the 19 different endings of Narratum Up the Stanley Parable will have you watting harder than the crowd during a Stone Cold Steve Austin promo. Our personal favourite for sheer WTFness is the game ending in which Stanley disobeys the narrator to the point where he gets genuinely angry about how Stanley is ruining his game. What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? The narrator then switches from passive aggression to actual aggression and makes you play a new game where you press a button to keep a baby away from some fire. You heartless bastard before giving up entirely and just making you watch while he plays Minecraft. Yes, 
It's complete. I made this Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Then, deciding Minecraft is too open-ended, the narrator drops you into the first level of Portal. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. You're 40. Before getting rid of the elevator and stranding you for all eternity in the original Source mod prototype of The Stanley Parable. I don't know guys, maybe we should have just listened to the narrator. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Uh, where were we? My mother was a bitch. Go on, I'm, I'm listening. listening. The Silent Hill series of survival horror games are full of horrifying imagery and deep, dark psychological themes. At least until you stumble across one of the game's UFO endings. And it all goes a bit Roger Corman. Googling. Appearing in every game except for Four and Downpour, these aren't throwaway joke endings, rather an established alternate continuity for the series where aliens first abduct Harry Mason, <laughs> then Harry and the aliens teamed up to abduct James Sunderland, <laughs> then Harry, James and the aliens break off from T to go and destroy the entire town of Silent Hill for being mean to Harry's daughter Heather. And also, aliens are abducting all the other Silent Hill protagonists because there's a set bonus or something? I don't know. So that's where they've been taking everybody. I knew it! I get the feeling these UFO endings aren't taking things seriously. Come on, guys, this is Silent Hill. Silent Hill endings are dark and thoughtful and... Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, my no. She was a dotonaka. Yeah, no, okay, fair enough. Carry on. Haha, it was me, the dog, all along. I was behind this video the whole time and you didn't suspect a thing. That's a strange ending to this video, isn't it? And part of my plan is also you clicking on one of the videos underneath me right now. I would indicate the one on the right with my paw if I felt like it. I'm not moving it though because I don't want to, is the reason. But that over there is a playlist of other videos like this one, but not this one, and you should watch that because I say so and I'm the dog and I'm in charge in this ending. And on the left here is a playlist of Outside Xbox's Show of the Week videos. I refer to them in the third person because I'm not one of them, I'm a dog, as I've explained earlier. In charge of everything, an evil dog. Ha <laughs> ha Anyway, watch one of those two things and I'm off to conquer the world with my dog powers. Bye!